one second. Hey, bro, you think that's good? All right. Yes. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ out here tonight. It's a good night to be alive if you're serving the Lord. But you have to understand, if you're serving yourself and you're living in sin, it's a very, very bad night to be alive. It's a good thing you are still alive because you have time to repent. You have, you have the mercy of God. The, the grace of God can be given to you. It's been revealed to you already. But if you're living in sin, you don't have the grace of God. A lot of people out here, they're professing Christians. They think they're right with God. But let me ask you a question. How can you be right with God when you sin against him? How can you possibly say, I'm a born again Christian. I'm a sinner saved by grace through faith and yet you keep on sinning. No, you're just a sinner. You're not saved from anything. How can you be saved from sin if you're still walking in it willfully, day after day after day? Sin, repent, repeat. Sin, repent, repeat. That's not a holy living for God. That's living for yourself. That's walking in the, your own ways. That's living how you want to live. But you cannot be saved by the amazing, glorious, wonderful, beautiful Savior, Jesus Christ, and still keep living the way you did before you were saved. No, it's not possible. There's no such thing as salvation without regeneration. You have to become a new creation, a new creature. You have to die to yourself. How can a man say, I've been born again, yet he still lives as the old man? As Paul said in Romans uh, 7 and 8, he, I come to the death of myself. Who can deliver me from this body of death? The Lord Jesus Christ. That's who. And only him. Only Jesus can set you free from your sin. You can't save yourself. No one else can save you. Only the, the amazing Savior, Jesus Christ, can set you free from your sin. Now here's the issue. A lot of people, they've been watered down with this Burger King gospel that lets them have it their way. You can be a drunkard and a Christian also. You can be a, a homosexual and a Christian also. You can uh, be a Christian and uh, commit abortion and murder an innocent baby. You can, be a, you can be a Christian and live in willful sin day after day after day. And you're still saved in your eyes. You're, you're, the Bible says there's a way that seems right to, to a man, to his own way, but thereunto it leads to death. You have to understand that being a born-again... Uh, no, I'm preaching. You can talk to one of my brothers. Being a born-again Christian doesn't mean you can continue walking in sin. You have to repent of your sins and die to yourself. Um, I'm preaching. You can talk to one of my brothers over here. God says today is the day of salvation. Today is the day of mercy. Today is the day of grace. But tomorrow could be judgment day. Tomorrow could be your last day on earth. Today could be your last day on earth. You could die of a heart attack, of an aneurysm. You could die of uh, alcohol poisoning. You could die of an STD. You could die of so many different things. You could drop dead this very moment and stand before an almighty righteous God of this universe. And at any moment, he could call you into eternity. This is why the Bible says to fear God and keep his commandments, for this is man's all. If you're not afraid of God, you don't know God. The fear of God causes men to depart from iniquity. How do you know if you're a real Christian? It's very simple. God, God is a, a God of truth, not a God of confusion. He didn't make the gospel confusing. He made it very simple. 1 John chapter 2, verses 3 and 4. And by this we know that we know him. If we keep his commandments, he who says, I know him, but does not keep his commandments is a liar. And the truth is not in him. That's right. What is the truth? Jesus said in John 14, 6, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And no man comes to the Father but by me. Ask yourself, do you know the truth? Are you walking the way? Do you have eternal life? Because if you don't, you don't know Jesus. Jesus does not leave a man in sin. It would be no different than if a fireman left a person in a fire, a blazing hot burning fire. That's not what firemen do. Firemen bust down the door, they run directly into the danger, and they drag the people out of the fire. That's what Jesus did when he died on that cross for you. He walked directly into a sinful world, he died on the cross, and he rose through the dead, and he made the way for you to walk to the Father. But here's the thing. There's people out there that think they don't have to do anything to be saved. That's not true. That could not be farther from the truth. Salvation is conditional, and it's a likened to this. If I give you a free car, maybe it's a car you can't afford, maybe it's a Lamborghini or a Mercedes Benz, 
right? I can't afford one. You have this amazing new car. Guess what you have to do? Now you have to pay taxes on that car. Now you have to put gasoline in that car. Now you have to have a driver's license. Now you have to register that car. Now you have to, you have to do so many things to this car to keep it and maintain it. It's a free gift, but it costs you something. And salvation is the same way. It's a free gift given to you freely by the Lord Jesus Christ. However, you have to maintain it. This is why Paul says, work out your salvation with fear and trembling. That's right. Salvation is not just something you get and now you don't have to do anything. You don't have to maintain it at all. You can just be a sinner, get drunk, fornicate, tell lies, curse, steal. You can do whatever you want and you're still saved. That's not true. How do you know that forgiveness is conditional, Mr. Street Preacher? Well, I'm glad you asked random person at the bar drinking alcohol and, and looking at other people dressed immodestly. It's very simple. Jesus said in John, uh, I mean Matthew chapter 6, he said, if you do not forgive your brethren, how can you be forgiven by God? That's right, the word if is there, it's conditional. You have to forgive someone in order to be forgiven yourself. You can't just expect God to give you forgiveness, but you keep harboring hate towards somebody else simply because they disagree with you or they have a different point of view or they have a different doctrine. And besides, if you truly hated somebody, you would not warn them about the wrath that's coming. If I truly hated a sinner, I would not tell them that if they stay that way, they'll go to hell. If I truly love them, I will warn them. Love warns. Love cannot remain silent in the midst of a wicked world. True love is telling somebody what is true, regardless how it makes them feel. Yes, it's hurtful to hear the truth. The truth hurts, but then guess what? Jesus is the truth, and Jesus went through pain and suffering for you. So why would you not be willing to go through pain and suffering for Jesus? God cares about you dearly. He loves you. He wants you to be born again. There's no amount of alcohol consumption. There's no amount of marijuana consumption. There's no amount of sex. There's no amount of... Uh, or worldly lusts or anything that's ever going to fulfill you. You will never be satisfied. You will continue to pursue it. When you get high, that high will run out. When you have sex, that, that uh, uh, orgasm will eventually end after a couple of seconds. But guess what? That When that goes away, you have to go chase it down again. You have to go after it and continue to do it. But with the Lord Jesus Christ, once you get eternal life, as long as you abide in Christ, you have that gift. It's given to you. It, it satisfies. Whether you're going through a divorce, whether you're, uh, uh, you, you lose family members and friends over this gospel, you will still have a supernatural joy, peace, and love that makes absolutely no sense. There's no way to describe it in this world. The love and the peace and the joy of Christ is offered to all men. However, not all men will take it. You see, God does love sinners in this sense. He hates their sin. He hates the hands that shed innocent blood. But God does have a love for people who are in sin in the sense of Christ died for them. The Bible says in Romans 5, verses 6 through 8, For scarcely for a righteous man will one die, yet perhaps for a good man some may even dare to die. But God demonstrates his own love towards us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. And he did it in due time while we were still without strength. That's the love of God. And Jesus talked about this love in our, uh, in. In the book of John, the gospel according to John, he said, at, at the cover of night, talking to one man, not a group of people, he said to one man named Nicodemus, in the cover of night, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, so that whoever believes upon him should not perish, but may have everlasting life. God did not send his son into this world to condemn the world, but that through him the world might be saved. Oh, see, we're, we're not condemned. Well, keep reading. It says that... Uh, he who believes in the uh, only begotten Son of God is not condemned, but he who does not believe is condemned already. And this is that condemnation, that light has come into this world, and men love the darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. That's right, you people don't want to come to Christ because your deeds are evil. You enjoy your drunkenness. You enjoy consuming alcohol. You enjoy having sex outside of marriage. You enjoy your homosexuality. You enjoy these wicked things that the, that the Bible says not to partake in. You enjoy them. But if you had any idea what our Savior did on the cross, there's no way you'd go back to going into your sin. There's no way you'd want to have sex outside of marriage again if you knew what Jesus went through for you to set you free from it. You people have no idea what Jesus Christ did on that cross for you. Because if you did, you wouldn't be out here doing this. 
We love you. We care about you. That's why we bring you this gospel, because this gospel can set you free. Jesus said you will know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. He is that truth. Jesus Christ said, heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will never fade. My words will never pass away. Here we are 2,000 years later. Every, every weekend, millions of people around the world get together and they recite the words of Jesus. Why? Because his words will never pass away. God, he loves you so much. You have no idea the love of this God for you. But if you stay in sin and you die that way, you will go to hell. The Bible says, that there's a, a, a fearful expectation of judgment for those who live in willful sin. That's true. If you're living in willful sin, you should be afraid. You should be scared. You should be terrified. You won't walk past God and, and be all happy-dappy, smiling, saying, yeah, bro, to God. It's not going to happen. Yeah, you might be wicked enough to sit here and mock the gospel now. You can mock us. You can mock the Bible, but you cannot mock God. God is not mocked. All you do is successfully store up wrath for yourself in the day of judgment. Jesus said, judge a tree by its fruits. Wait a minute, Jesus. I'm not, we're not allowed to judge. Thou shalt not judge. Those are Tupac lyrics. That's not what the Bible says. Jesus said in John 7:24, judge ye righteous judgment. Do not judge according to hypocrisy or appearance the way the scribes and Pharisees do. Jesus said to judge a tree by its fruit. For a tree is known by its fruits. A good tree will produce good fruit, and a corrupt tree will produce evil fruit. A good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit, nor will a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. For a tree is known by its fruits. A good man, out of the good treasure of his heart, will bring forth good things. But an evil man, out of the evil treasure of his heart, will bring forth evil things. For I say unto you, out of the heart the mouth speaks, for, you hypocrites, how can you, being evil, speak good things? For every word that a man may utter in this life, he will give an account for in the day of judgment. For by your words you will be justified, and by your words you will be condemned. How are you serving the Lord Jesus Christ out here tonight? God cares about you dearly. He loves you so much that he stepped into this world and died on the cross for you. But if you're still living in sin, that then you have no idea what that even means. You people think that you're born again and saved walking into this wicked place, partaking in this absolute debaucherous, filthy lifestyle? No, you're not. You're deceiving yourself. If you're still a sinner, you are not saved. If you're living in sin, you will not inherit the kingdom of God. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 9 says, Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Be ye not deceived. No liar, nor fornicator, nor effeminate, nor homosexual, nor, nor uh, cheater, nor uh, lustful, nor extortioner, nor reviler, nor a drunkard will inherit the kingdom of God. But as were some of you, but you've been washed clean. You see, the gospel changes a sinner into a saint. And it's the only thing in this world that can change a person. Nothing else will work. And you can sit here and chant the name of Jesus all you want. But if you're still in sin, all you're doing is giving him lip service. Jesus said, you confess me with your mouth, but your hearts are far from me. And though you stand hand in hand, sinners, you will not escape the judgment. You will give an account for what you do in this world. Jesus said in Matthew 16, 27, that he's coming back to judge the world, to, to reward every man according to his deeds. Paul said in the New Testament that sin leads unto death. He said, know ye not that you cannot serve two masters? For whom you, uh, whom you subject yourself servants to, that is your master? Whether it be sin leading unto death or obedience leading unto righteousness. Jesus himself said, you cannot serve two masters. For you will love one, and you will hate the other. Or you will abide in one, and you will despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. He who sins is a slave to sin, and a slave will not abide in the house forever. But a son will abide in the house forever. Therefore, he who the son sets free will be free indeed. You have to understand the gospel of Jesus Christ sets people free. That's very loving of you. That's very, very loving of you. I forgive you. I care about you. I want you to be set free and born again. I want you to come to a knowledge of the truth, to, to, have, uh, to be sanctified, and not to live in willful sin. 
If you die in sin, you will go to hell. But you don't have to. You can become a born again saint of the Lord. Why would you want to live any other lifestyle? Well, I'll tell you why. Because you love darkness rather than light. You love your deeds, your wicked deeds. You love getting drunk. You love fornicating. You love telling lies. You love uh, having nice things. You, you don't care about others the way you care about yourself. You see, the Bible says that we must love God with our whole mind, soul, and spirit, and strength. And we must love our neighbor as ourselves. If you do these things, that is the whole of the prophet in the law. But how are you doing those things when you're out here living this lifestyle of, uh, of abundance and indulgence? You're drinking copious amounts of alcohol. You get so intoxicated, you need somebody to drive you home. You can't even drive yourself home. How is that good? How is consuming poison good for you? It's not. The Bible says, if, you, if you're being born again and you go back to your sin, you're like a dog lapping up his own vomit. How many of you out here have ever seen a dog puke and go back to his puke and lap it up with wagging his tail enjoying it? That's what the Bible says you are if you go back to your sins. Many of you out here may not have ever actually experienced the Holy Ghost and been born again. But I tell you right now, it's the most amazing experience you can have. Think not that Jesus came into this world to bring peace. He came to bring a sort of division. I don't have to have this on my side. It's in the Bible. You just read your Bible. Open your Bible. And I'm not your bro. I'm not your brother. You and me, we serve two different masters. You see, I abide in the Lord Jesus Christ and I live holy. And you mock the preaching of the gospel and you live a debaucherous lifestyle. But I care about you. I love you. I love you enough to, set, to tell you that the, the gospel can set you free from your sin. You have to understand, Jesus said, He who hears my sayings and keeps them, I will liken it to a wise man who built his home on a rock. And the rains fell, and the winds blew, and the waves crashed, and his home stood, because it was built on the solid rock. But he who hears my sayings and does not do them, I will liken it to a foolish man who built his house on sand. And the rain fell, and the winds blew, and the waves crashed, and his home fell. And, it was, and great was its desolation because it was not founded on the solid rock. Jesus Christ is the only way to be saved. Muslims will go to hell. People who are, are, are meditate on Buddhism, they will go to hell. People who are agnostic, unless they repent, will go to hell. People who are atheists who don't believe in God, unless they repent, will go to hell. People who are Hindu and believe in many gods, unless they repent, will go to hell. Any false Christian who claims the name of Christ but lives wicked like a, a Mormon or a Jehovah's Witness who are so falsely deceived, they will go to hell unless they repent. False doctrine of the Catholic, the Catholic Church, it leads to hell unless you repent of it and stop walking in it. You have to understand there's no man on earth that can save you except Jesus Christ. The name above all names, the only name under, uh, under heaven and on earth by which a man must be saved is the name of Jesus Christ, Yeshua HaMashiach. The most amazing name that I know. The only name that can set a man free from sin. You have to understand. Walking in this world in sin will lead to death. It will lead to death. You coming to this bar tonight to get drunk? And NIV and ASB all based on corrupt manuscripts. To partake of the indulgences of this world? That leads to hell unless you repent. The Bible says the love of this world and the things of this world are enmity with God. That's right. If you love this world or the things in this world, you are an enemy of God. And what is the love of the world? The lusts of the eyes, the lusts of the flesh, and the pride of life. That's what the love of this world is. And if you have those things, or you exhibit the fruits of those things, you, and you die in it, you will go to hell. You do not have the love of God in you if you do these things. You practice not the truth. You deceive yourself. God is not a God of deception. God is not a God of, of confusion. God is a God of truth. A God of, think of, of think joy of the, uh, and, and think of the audacity, bro, others. but they go but around trying to check everybody's doctrine and you will to make sure we're right with them. Righteously. It's like going around being think not that reading our signs and coming you to us, making get, sure we're doing what they think we should be doing. To separate you. Pretty bold. To separate a father from his son. To separate a mother from no Bible verse to back up To separate a mother from her daughter. Romans 3, 1 John 1, 8 type stuff. God's word, the gospel of Jesus, is a two-edged sword. That separates bone from joint. The dividing. That's what Jesus came to do, to divide. 
you can divide the world as you divide his people, the saints. Saying, well, it says, Ask you know, yourself today, are you walking saying, holy you know, says, for God or are you walking holy saying, for yourself? Going back to it, Please, in the name of Jesus, that, in the almighty name of Jesus, for Christ your sin tonight, he held, you cannot do it on your own. To what you can't walk holy in God's world on your own. You cannot save yourself. You must die for yourself. Stop trying That's when they walk away and say, well, if that's what you're going to believe, I'm not going to talk to you. Let him deny himself daily. Pick up his cross and walk with me. If any man, if any man wishes to come after me and he does not hate his father and mother, his brother and sister, his son and his daughter, his wife, and yes, even his very own life also, he is not worthy to be my disciple. And if any man puts his hand on the plow and looks backwards, he is not fit for the kingdom. Are you fit for the kingdom tonight? Do you know who the Lord Jesus Christ is? Are you familiar with his death, burial, and resurrection from the grave? Jesus didn't die on the cross so that you could be a sinner. Jesus didn't die for your sins so you could just keep on sinning. Jesus died on the cross to set you free from sin, to save you from your wickedness, so that you could be sanctified and reconciled to the Father. Jesus said, narrow is the enter in at the straight gate, for broad is the path that leads to destruction, and many are them that be there on it. Narrow, narrow is the path. And difficult is the way that leads to life. And very few are them that find it. Jesus Christ is that young for God. You're the one that's 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 the one Shame on you. No, Open I'm your saying, eyes. No, I'm the word of God right is being preached no, tonight, and right you're coming right against it. No, I'm saying right now that just because you're saved by God does not mean that you don't Amen. sin still. No, no, the Bible tells you to stop sinning. God tells you to stop sinning. Being human is not an excuse for you to sin, young lady. No, but we are in a sinful world that is filled with temptation. Being in a sinful world with temptations, I mean you can sin. Does not mean that you're not going to sin. What are you saved from? What are you saved from? I'm saved from the, the punishment for sin. But not from sin itself? So you keep on doing what causes the punishment? No, I'm not. You're confused. You're sorely confused. You are confused. I know who my God is. First Corinthians says, do not say that. Yeah, pat her on the back and bring her away her feelings. That's what you gotta do. But you guys don't know the Bible. You don't know God. You're out here supporting sin, promoting sin. And God saves from sin. When you're here telling people they can keep being sinners and be a, be a Christian, you're believing that about yourself as well. That you can be a Christian and live in sin. You're deceived. God calls you out of your sin. Yes, believing in Jesus set us free from our sin. No, if not, you're still committing it to death. Are you still committing sin? We're tempted every single day, right? I'm not talking about temptation now. I'm talking about committing sin. If you're committing sin, you're not set free from it. If someone you know, said, I'm set free from Jesus jail, they keep going back to it, they're really set free? Him, they, they put their hands back in the shackles, are they really set free? You don't, you don't, you don't sin anymore? I forsook for my you. sin, he and I have, have no plans to ever sin again, and I'm not sinning right now. How do you not sin? How do I not sin? I, I walk in the spirit. I submit myself to God's word. You don't, you haven't told a lie since you've been saved. Okay, now, now you're talking about in the past. No. Say so now you're switching. Now you went from. Since you've been saved, no, 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 you man, listen, listen. This is, this is basic grammar. You went from you never sin anymore to you have your sins to become a Christian. Those are two different questions. No, they're not. Yes, they are. One's talking about the present and the future, and one's talking about the past. So when you came to salvation. This is basic grammar, young man. Since then, That's the way grammar works. You understand? Past, present, and future. Since so I've sinned. I've sinned. Sin. Sin. Yes, I have. You just said you're not a sinner. Right? Which is talking about the present, not the past. This is not hard to understand, man. I don't know why you have a confused look on your face. If I say I've sinned in the past, it doesn't mean I'm sinning right now. God commands you to be holy. Can you be holy? I can't be perfect. Why can't you be perfect? God commands it. Because we're all sinners. Being Jesus. a sinner in the past does not need to keep on doing it. What do you think repentance is? Repentance is stopping it. Right. For, so why aren't you stopping it? 
We are still. No, you're not. You're, 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 you're a professor. You're coming to do it. Sin, are you, you still doing away, it? You turn away from Are you still in sin right, right now? No. So you're perfect. So you're perfect. No, that does not no. mean you're perfect. Well, what are you then? We're righteous before God because of Jesus. What is, what, we're made right. Tell me what righteous and perfect. What's the difference between the two things? Because Jesus was perfect. We lived an entire life without sin. We sin, but we can now adopt the righteousness of Christ. What do you I mean by that? In Jesus. What do you mean by He commanded God. us to fear God. Are you telling me that Jesus he lived righteously for you? Fear. Are you telling me you're living a righteous life? No, but I'm many saying of you every have single sin that we've committed and will commit many of you have has been died back for. On the Lord. And if you believe many in Christ, of you have chosen the way of pleasure has taken your sin rather than the way of perseverance and endurance. Now you're talking about one save, always save. It's a completely different op situation. We're talking about righteousness and sin. What is your life like, young man? Do you have no but sin in your life know. right now that you're refusing to repent of? What? No, I repent of all of my sins. Jesus. I'm not talking about in the past. I'm talking about right now. Do you have any known sin in your life right now that you're refusing to repent of? So then you're living a holy life. That's exactly what we're saying. We're living a holy life, and that's the way God wants everyone to live. Okay, so where's the contention then? Not once, and since you've been saved. Now you're switching the question again. Yes, you are. You're switching the question again. I've been talking about, I've been, hold on, I've been talking about present tense the whole time, and in the future, what my plans are. I've never once talked about what I've done in the past. He asked me the question a second I already said yes to it are you gonna sin again I have no idea I have no plans to and it's possible yes or no I just answered your question no you didn't yes I did you said am I gonna sin in the future yes or no it's not a yes or no question that's a false dichotomy I don't know the future I have no idea if I'm gonna sin in the future my plan is to never sin again and by the great perfect young man you're not listening I plan to never sin again and by the grace of God it's possible you're telling me it's not impossible it's, it's not possible. It's, it's impossible to stop sinning. You're telling me it's impossible to live holy for God the rest of my life? So you're telling me? Oh, that's what. So, so he's admitting it. He's admitting it. So it is possible with God. I can do all things through Christ. Come on, finish it. Who strengthens me? Dude, if I walk in the Jesus spirit, Christ, please, I don't you. know, memorize this. Okay, I'm sorry. I thought I thought you might have known it. It's a pretty well known verse. Let's put this 4:13. But the Bible teaches you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. The Bible teaches that you can, if you walk in the spirit, you won't fulfill the lust of the flesh. And if you really love God, you're going to actually obey God. Those are the words of Jesus. So if you're living in open rebellion against God, you're you're doing what you know you should not be doing. You have no salvation. You're not saved from your sin. You're walking in rebellion. You're currently on your way to hell. Do you feel pressured to live like perfect and free of sin? What do you mean by pressure? I, I, I obey God because he loved me first. So if, that, if, that's, if that's pressure, he loved me, and I want to love him back. If you called that pressure, then yes, I'm pressure. But I don't, I thought like a, you don't it's, feel like, pressure it's, to it's live not a burden to me. It's not a burden to me. No, the, the, the love of God is to keep his commandments, 1 John 5, 3, and his commandments are not burdensome. It's not a burden for me to have, to keep God's commandments and live holy. It's a joy to me. It's a burden to me to go back to my sin. It's a burden to me to sin at all. You, you That's a huge live, weight on my life. Like right. like right. I want to live like him completely. Right. Just like he's our example. Many of you know and that's what he calls to me, just Lord. like him. That's what a Christian is, Noah, someone who's Christ-like. Christ never sinned. So my goal the rest of my days is never, ever sin ever again. And by the grace of God, it's possible. And God, I believe, that's, made him that's respectable, but we know that we can't do that. Well, no, you believe that, and therefore, guess what you're going to do? But if you actually but believe God's word, you, you will not. God's no, you don't. Yes, because do. God says you shouldn't be sinning. What is the state of and God, God I've quoted you several verses. What that you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. So you're telling me it's impossible what will you for do? God to help you overcome all sin? Will you humble yourself? It's impossible? I don't think no. I can never sin again. So I, will humble I'm not talking about you and your strength. I'm talking about you depending upon God. You're telling me that God is not strong enough God to overcome your little bit of sin? He hates the Temptation is perfect. Temptation like is too strong? Well, God wants you to be perfect, not me. God wants you to be perfect. God does not want me to be perfect. Matthew 5, 48. The words of Jesus, be perfect as your heavenly Father is perfect. He wants me to be more like him. That's not what the Bible says. It says, be perfect as your heavenly Father is perfect. 
Open your Bible, man. Get out your. No, it's not out of context. Show me. Prove it to me. We cannot be perfect. We are not Jesus. See, now, what you've done now, young man, is you have these ideas planted in your mind, and you're imposing them upon the Bible. And even though I'm giving you verses which completely contradict what you're saying, you don't want to submit to the Bible. You, you hold on to your traditions. I'm not saying I'm Jesus, but we can be like him. He calls us to be like him. Jesus is perfect. You're now, saying now you're the definition of Jesus being perfect is different than my for perfection. Jesus' perfection has never sinned ever. I've sinned thousands you're of times. By believing in Jesus, we're, we're you can be perfect. perfect. I'm telling you that by following Jesus, see, that's where he walks away. Actually, that's where he walks away. We're changing out shifts. Yeah. You don't understand, young man. I'll leave you with this if you're leaving. I don't know. I think so. We both, like all of us are trying to do the same thing. Like no, I don't think so. Not even close. I, we've talked to you guys last night, tonight, last year. Not the same plan at all. You guys keep people in a bondage to their sin. God wants to free people from sin. You understand? Not keep you in sin. He wants to free you. Break the chains. Live in victory. Overcome sin. That's what God wants you to do. I'm here. So the Bible says in 1 Corinthians 10, 13, no temptation has overtaken us except such as is common to man. And God is faithful. He will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you're able, but with the temptation provide the way of escape that you may be able to bear it. So in that scripture, you have many truths. First, when temptation comes, we know God's going to provide a way out every time. It's not too much for us to handle with his strength and he'll help us to overcome it and live in victory. The question becomes in that situation, am I gonna think to myself, well, I can't help it, I'm just gonna give in. This is too hard, I, it's too much for me to handle. But the Bible says the exact opposite. Why would I believe something that says the exact opposite of what God's word says? Because God's word is truth. So I'm gonna believe God's word over anything other kind of thought because in my mind, I'm believing God's word. And if God says when temptation comes, we can overcome it, there's a way out, look for it. And not only that, there's other people who've been tempted in the same way in this world at some point in time, maybe even right now, and they're overcoming it. Okay. Can I try reiterating what I hear? Okay. okay. So what you're saying is, uh, obviously we're not perfect, humans, but once we come to Christ, we there is a chance that we can sin. However, with faith Jesus in God Christ and Christ, we have the strength to never sin again. That's exactly. Well, well, the first part, I, I don't understand what you meant the first part, but we said after that was is right. right. So, us being like human. We have the, the original sin inside. Okay, no, no. So, us being human and not being perfect is the part I'm talking about. So, if you mean by that we're not intellectually perfect, yes. You mean by that we're not physically perfect, yes. I meant righteous. Oh, so, so, moral perfection for men is simply. Simply this. Everything you know you, you know, should be doing, here, you're doing it. Does it, does it lead Everything you know you shouldn't be doing, leave. you're not doing it. It does not mean I can go back and erase sins I've committed in the past. Okay? I can't be like Jesus in that way because I've already messed that part up. Jesus never sinned ever. I've sinned tens of thousands of times in my life. Okay? That's where forgiveness is. So there must be forgiveness to wash in the blood of Jesus Christ, to cleanse us from all sin and forgive us from all sin. But then we walk in victory. We don't continue to go back to the pig slot and the vomit from the dog, right? right? Like Second Peter 2 talks about, we live in victory by the power of the Holy Spirit. If the Holy Spirit is living inside of me as a Christian, do I not have the power of God living inside of me? Do I not have the ability, therefore, to live as God tells me to live? God doesn't command the impossible. He commands the possible. So when God says in Matthew 5, 40, be perfect, he meant it. When he says, be holy as I am holy in 1 Peter 1, he means it. Just like he's holy. I was on the beach today, and I believe myself saved, and I was walking along the beach, and I saw someone, and I was a lady in a bikini, and I, was, I had an ultra thought. It happens, it was a sin. What's your statement on that? It was a sin. It was a sin. You shouldn't have committed it. You didn't have to commit it. You should have overcome it. So I'll give you from Job. Job was a righteous man. He feared God, he shunned evil. Job 31.1, he said about himself, I've made a covenant with my eyes not to look lustfully upon a woman. Well, I'm not saying, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not doubting and caught you off guard, man. I'm not saying you walked to the beach and say, I'm going to go lust against a woman. I'm not saying you had that premonition in your mind. I'm more curious about what does that say to the state of my salvation? It says that if you continue in that sin without repentance, you're going to go to hell. 
I pray for forgiveness. I pray for forgiveness. Repeatedly. And here's the thing. You can be genuinely sorrowful about sin. It, do, it doesn't mean that you're, you're going to actually stop it from happening. You understand? You can be remorseful. Oh, I shouldn't have done that. I didn't want to do that. I didn't mean to do that. It caught me off guard. You can say those things and they'll be actually be true. But the question becomes, what are you going to do in the future to make sure it doesn't keep on happening? Yeah. You understand? So if, if someone is like, doesn't know how to swim, are they going to keep on going to a pool and jumping in deep end? That wouldn't make sense, would it? If someone can't drive a car, they keep on getting behind the wheel and drive a car down the road? And that doesn't make sense. So if you have a problem with lust, don't go to the beach. Or at least fast and pray beforehand to prepare yourself and make sure you'll deal with the faces, not their chest, not their backside. See, there's, there's preparation, there's boundaries you put up for yourself to make sure you don't go back to your sin. Jesus said to pluck out the eye. Yeah. Right? Cut off the hand, cut off the foot. Make no provision for the flesh to fulfill its lust. So repentance isn't just saying I'm sorry or crying about it. It's, it's about making a way to not let it happen again. If a man has a problem, look at pornography on his phone. Guess what? Get rid of the phone if you got to. I know that sounds like sacrilegious to not have a phone in this day and age, but if it means your soul, is a phone more important than your soul? Yeah, that's, that's what I'm talking about. If you have a problem with getting drunk, when I first got saved, I had been saved out of drunkenness. I wasn't going to bars. I wasn't hanging out at the dance club anymore. In fact, all my friends who I hung out with, I stopped hanging out with them. I knew if I did, they would drag me right back into my sin again. So that's what you have to do when you really repent. That's the, what it takes. And if you really are sorrowful over your sin, you don't want to keep on doing it, you will do what it takes to make sure it doesn't happen again. So what does that say to say to salvation? Well, have you repented? Yes. Well, then you're saved. You have to confess and repent of your sins. So let's say you sin, and then you die, and we're not here you salvation. We're here. We're not gonna tell you what you want to hear. We're gonna be a true okay. friend. Okay, I've heard that question many times. Jesus said in Matthew 24, those who endure to the end shall be saved. That your drunkenness Did you endure to the end? If you die in sin. I would assume the sin would have been it may be shocking covered to you, by the, uh, the cross. But that's because you don't know what no. the word of God says. Now what Jesus did at the cross is sufficient to forgive you of every single sin you've ever, you ever will commit. It's sufficient in God's eyes to be a substitute for you going to hell. But it doesn't mean you automatically get forgiveness. Did Jesus die for all these people here tonight? Yes. Are they all saved? No. There you go. So God commands you to repent, and repentance is required for you to receive forgiveness. So if you go back to your sin, you got to repent again. Otherwise, you're not cleansed. You're not forgiven. Forgiveness is conditioned upon your faith and your, your genuine faith, which produces works, according to James 2, and repentance. And if you really know God, according to 1 John 2, 3 through 4, you will obey but the reason, his command. The reason you will why you obey. don't think you need to be saved is because you don't see your need for Jesus. I can't completely agree. And here's agree. your need. But if you're living in sin. Well, it's based upon the Bible. Oh, I agree. And I would encourage, and I, well, if you agree with that, yeah, you should. You've yet to not use it out of the Bible. Every time you're you're in chains, you're in visible chains. But you're wrapped in invisible chains, my friends. Seems. You can't give up the alcohol. You can't give up the sex outside of marriage. Peculiar. You can't give up the lustful thoughts the on your own. Well, Titus 2 but calls people Jesus of God peculiar. Yeah, it's going to be strange to the world around us. It's going to be strange to the church world, too, because most of the church world is messed up. They don't have proper doctrine. There's hypocrisy abounds. False teaching abounds. We're in an age of apostasy, man. So you better make sure you're not just, you better make sure you're not just walking along with everybody else. You just better make sure you're not just towing the line and going with the crowd, even the church crowd. You better make sure you get in the word yourself, reading it for yourself, not reading it through your pastor's eyeglasses either. You got to open the Bible and let God speak to you and give you pure doctrine. Because I mean, when I was first a Christian, I was kind of my pastor's mercy, right? Because I'm new, I don't know anything, I haven't read the Bible myself ever. When I first became a Christian, I had never read the Bible before. So when I had tried a little bit here and there, I couldn't understand it before I became a Christian. And when I became a Christian, I had a pastor, and he, he was a pretty good pastor. I believe he was sincere and genuine, but he had some false things. I had to figure those things out. By reading the, but before I started to read the Bible with my own, this is like a blank slate, objectively, unbiasedly, 
I began to, I was reading the Bible through my pastor's eyes. Or through some book, like some guy, I, I used to read Charles Stanley. He has lots of false doctrine there. And so for a while, I was reading the Bible through his eyeglasses. Because I was reading his book and reading the Bible. But instead, I just got along with the Bible and got along with God and read it for myself. If I have the Holy Spirit living inside me, I can understand what it says. He said, the Holy Spirit wrote the Bible. Through him. So God wants you to have pure doctrine. He wants you to be holy and live in victory. And you can. And I'm not, I'm not telling you to believe what I say I'm saying. You understand? I'm, I'm telling you to check it. I'm telling you to check it for yourself. But I'll tell you a good place to start. First John. First John is a, it's a letter written to have you know that you have salvation. And it's all kinds of checks all throughout it. Now, I, I probably have like 15 verses memorized in First John. I love it so much. It's really a check to this world of Christianity that thinks you can keep on sinning and be a follower of Christ. I read, from where I am in Christ, I've been a follower, I believe, for a year now. Um, I've read through Matthew, Mark, and Luke. I want to get all the copies, so John's next. I just finished Luke last night. Um, we, my pastor at my church, he's been doing, um, uh, what's his name, Jew, Jew, so he's been doing the uh, correlation. He says he points out like this is the symbolism back to uh, Christ. And this is how this points back towards you know the great Messiah and this uh, connection. So I can see where you're going from. Coming from. I can see you really can believe this. And you bring me, you bring out the seeds, you got the, the, the verses yes, and such. The sacrifices the son. What we heard last and night, standing on the side, we have. was you know, the one thing we heard make was, I don't sin, I don't sin anymore. Yep. That's what got us all talking today, and that, that's what portion of us came over here to talk to. Because okay. we're, 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 we heard that, but we didn't get the rest of this this conversation we really want to here. Okay. So, I would encourage you to step up your zeal in reading the Bible. Okay, if you've been saved for a year, you should have read through the whole thing by now. I'm not, I'm not trying to rebuke you, I'm just telling you. You need to get a little more zealous about it. And I would encourage you to read through the whole New Testament as quickly as you can. Just read it through, over and over and over. And the Old Testament is important too. But New Testament is what our, our doctrine as Christians, New, New Testament Christians is based upon. So, read it through, man. Get zealous about it. Put aside entertainment, amusement, whatever distractions you have. Get a little God and read it, man. Otherwise, you're going to be deceived. If you don't know the Bible yourself, there's false teachers out there who know it better than you do, and they will deceive you. You understand? So you need to make sure you're reading it for yourself over and over and over. I'm mean, going to pray the New Testament probably 120 times in 25 years. Okay? And I'm not saying that the boast. I'm just telling you. You need to read it, man. If you don't read it, you're not protecting yourself. Because Jesus said that false teachers will come in the last days. And we're getting closer and closer at that time, man. So they're going to get more and more. And more and more deception will abound. More and more lies will abound. And you need to make sure you're protecting yourself. We're always fresh. Yes, we're the Lord. We're going to figure out where our van is. Okay. Have a good night. Two minutes. Take care. Really, it seems like the, the females are the worst, man. They're really... She shouldn't be teaching anyone anything. She shouldn't be correcting men of God. Most recent hour pay was probably a month ago. Yeah. I have not. Okay, that's fine. Can I give you these? Can you give him one? Yeah. My friends, you must turn from your sin and turn to Jesus Christ. Good preaching, bro. Amen, bro. Praise God. Preach it. Jesus, he commands complete holiness. He commands you to turn today. Yes, he commands you to turn today. I broke down those false doctrines, showed them scripture. And you know, if you're talking so about the gospel like amongst, amongst your friends no and they're so deterring you from coming church, you know? to Jesus, they're not your friends. Those who, who are just using you for your body. No, you don't wish, actually. A lot of men will objectify women. I think we did. Yeah. And you know, them too. Yeah. I think it's because a lot of women. I can't imagine the hangover. 
They have there there's so many dogs. Yes, I have a hangover. You just keep on drinking. And they want a lot of attention. So they dress to get attention. But my friends, Jesus, he can wipe away all of that to where you don't seek the attention or praises of men. And he, he's the greatest friend that anyone could ever have. You must live for Jesus. You must live for Jesus, not just nodding your head and agreeing, but actually doing it. Stop being a hearer and be a doer. Because we have so many people that are hearing the gospel, and it's effortless to hear the gospel. Anybody can sit down and hear the gospel. Here, here you go. You can have that. But no, you can't preach. Well, go get a, a speaker yourself, and you can. I can't stop you from doing that, but I'm not going to let you preach. I'm a speaker. Go ahead. Put a shirt on, man, and repent. You know, Jesus, he's the greatest friend anyone could have. And you know, he saved my soul. I used to come down to Panama City Beach when I was a sinner, and I used to look forward to the trip. I would hype it up for something that it's not gonna be. And as soon as it comes to pass, and it's over with, and I'm back to my so-called regular life, it's just emptiness, it's vanity. And you know, many people are living for just that pleasure, for the next best thing, so to speak. And then once it comes to pass, it just leaves them more empty than before. Because you see, when you try to fill something that's empty with more emptiness, you're just left more empty before. It's like going to a restaurant wanting to to fix that, that starvation or that, that hunger, and you leave more hungry before because it didn't satisfy you. Imagine eating food that's invisible, and that's what your sin is like. Imagine... Imagine a restaurant selling food that is all invisible. And that's what your sin is like, my friends. Imagine the alcohol that's in your, your, the bottles that you're drinking. And imagine if it was just full of air. That's, that's what it's doing. That's exactly what it's doing to you, my friends. But you don't see it. And this is why Jesus he can give you eyes to see, spiritual eyes to see what your sin is doing to you. And you must love him. Do you love Jesus? Because Jesus, he says, if you love him, you'll keep his commandments. Are you living holy? Will you die tonight? How do you know that? Are you living holy? Okay, what are you doing here? Thank you. Okay. I'm not saying there's... Okay, that's fine. Huh? What was that last word you just said? Okay, you're not living holy, man. Because Jesus says, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. So whatever is in your heart will come out of your mouth. Don't let, don't let people snatch you away, man. You can hear it. There it comes, right there. You need to come to Jesus. Come to Jesus. You need, you're filthy, man. You're the cult, bro. You're the cult. <laughs> All right. Hey, you should offer some Kool-Aid, bro. <laughs> Something for you to read? Where's that? Adam? Over there, on the side of the cars. Oh, okay. You want to preach, bro? Yeah, I mean, unless Mo wants to preach. You want to preach, bro? 
Is that my mic, bro? No. Oh. I didn't want to choke you. No, no, I'm just five of Oh, yeah. Yeah, because, like, I don't know. I've been watching a lot of All you spring breakers have come out here to live your best life, so to speak. You've come out here to have a good time, do what you want to do, but ultimately, you've come here because you're seeking after something. You're seeking after pleasure. You know, there's, there's many pleasures in this world, and you know, the the devil roams around as a roaring lion, the roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. And you've, you've given in to sin, which gives pleasure for a season. You're coming out here because you're seeking after life, but you're not going to find life out there. You're not going to find purpose. Yeah, I know, you may find pleasure in sin, but my friend. The pleasures of sin are only good for a season. You can enjoy yourself now, you can enjoy your That's the presence of the cop will really deter all these, all the crazy ones. Yeah, for sure. Max turned out to be a good thing. Is this all the fake Christian? I'm not sure. Maybe. Like nobody down here, bro. They, they used to have it very last year, the lines were right here. They put them back there instead. I don't know if that was Probably. I just, I just guess them, but probably. Yeah. Maybe they're anticipating more business. I don't know. Yeah. That may be why it was dead out here last night, too. Yeah. Like, I didn't look back there last night. to a club where it's dark and it's the dim, the dim light. Brother Paul is talking to a guy who was raised in Mormon in Utah. In Miami stays in Miami. He moved out here. There's no, no whatever happens in Miami here. Is gonna He's be been going to different churches Christ open to Christianity. Whatever whatever talking to him right now. Sorry, I didn't come out here. Yeah. No, I love Jesus Christ. Man. Okay. Well, God bless you. I didn't, I didn't come out here to have you come from preaching God bless you, man. Okay. God bless you, man. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Turn, turn to Jesus, man. I turn to Jesus. You can are, do. Are you, do you, are you a sinner? Uh, I am a sinner, yes. Okay. Why, why are you still a sinner? If you, are you claiming to be a Christian? I'm a Christian and I'm a sinner, yes. How, how, is, how can someone be a Christian following Christ but yet still be a sinner? Because everybody sins, man. Well, the Bible says something different. The Bible says if, if I myself am found to be a sinner while Christ is, a, is, a, is my, claiming to be my Lord, is Christ therefore a minister of sin? He's not. It's, it's everybody right. sins, but God forgives everybody, man. Well, not everybody sins. Yeah, you've never sinned before. I've sinned in the past, but I don't plan to sin anymore in the future. I don't try to sin. I, it, it's an accident. Man. Do you believe you can be free from sin? Yes. Okay, so how? So what? Let me. Why do you call yourself a sinner? If you if you claim to be living or and living holy, because you can't be living holy and a sinner at the same time, man. Because. But you can talk to my friend. I'm, I'm going to keep preaching. I'll talk to you. Uh, yeah, he'll All talk right. to you. Yeah, so I mean, oh, my friends, turn to the Bible Jesus. tells you you can be holy, he completely holy. Yeah. So there's no reason why you should keep being a sinner. He if you love Jesus, you'll obey him. Let the I wicked like forsake the way his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts. It's contradicting because let him return to the Lord. Maybe to what you believe, but I'm not sure. Because I'm not against him. that at all. I love Jesus. I, yes, I, I God praise will Jesus have Christ every night. I pray to God. But you have to humble yourself. Jesus said, if you love me, you will keep my commandments. But you're telling me you're continuing to sin, and we're not Jesus. I didn't say I was Jesus. I'm telling what he said. But he's acting like he's Jesus. He's not Jesus. He's not. He is. He's acting like a follower of Jesus. You're not following Jesus while you're sinning. You're not getting. It's impossible. To you're not getting time. true fulfillment being out. Not here. possible. He's trying you're to get, go he's home, trying to put his own discipline up on us. Talking the word of God. 
Uh, it's telling you the word of God, what it says. You're going to know, notice. The word of God tells you to be holy, enough, right? to turn from sin. You're not going to be satisfied. And you can't follow be Jesus and be a sinner at the same time. I'm not trying to disagree. I'm just, I'm curious. I'm, 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 I'm not, I'm not, like, I, I want to turn from my whole life. I'm, just, I'm not knowledgeable of Christ, you know? I understand. I'm just telling you that. If you want to really follow Christ, you got to give up all sin. But you have nothing better. I try. I mean, it's not, it's not a matter of trying, though. I don't, I don't look, look for sin. It's just, I was raised by my great grandparents without a mother. Sorry, without a mother or father, I was just put. I was put in a bad environment. Oh my friends, you need to be able to. But, learn from but God your can deliver you from that. And I and I, and I believe He has, because my my brother. It's not a guarantee. Is this video? Life. Yeah, it's video. Too. I don't know if you're watching. Or I just. I, 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 don't about that. I feel like. I have. I have. Some people don't make it to 25, difficulty. 26. I have accepted that. You know, people die at, at, I'm not at perfect, and I, I have accepted no that age, people had it worse than me. You could die tonight. But I'm still. And then what, what will become of you? If you acceptive of like. I don't know how to explain it other still than. Still in rebellion against God. What God can deliver you from all sin, man. Can I believe that? Temptation is, is normal. You can be tempted. And I Jesus was that. tempted, but didn't sin. And, and I believe that. And I believe the same thing. And I hope. I believe what you guys are doing is a great thing. If I if I don't do what you guys want me to do, you know the song is your choice. I'm trying, man. But let's need to surrender. Not about just trying and being up here. What what do I need to do to surrender? Whatever your sin is. I don't know what your sin is. You told me you've been still sinning. I'm just telling you to surrender your whole life to Jesus Christ, and He will fill you with His Holy Spirit and give you the power to overcome sin. That's what He wants to do. And that's, that's my testimony. That's His testimony. God changed us from the inside out, and that, that gave us the power to be obedient to Him. That's your Makes life sense. before God, man. And he wants you to That's be your life before God. And he gives you all the power you need you to know, be you holy. Blow it I'm sorry, I'm, I'm trying to listen. There's just so much is. going on, man. Your life. Yeah. I'm listening. Life? I'm like listening. Yeah, so God wants you to, to live holy today, and he gives you everything you need to be holy. It's just that quick before God. And it's just up to us. Just to do it. You know, it's either you do it or you don't do it. To surrender to him and allow him to fill you with your spirit and walk in that power. That's your choice, yes. I make the mistake of not surrendering to him most of the time. Well, he can forgive you of that. that about I know, I know he's mercy available for you, but you got to repent. Yeah, you got to truly give it up. You can't keep going back to it. You know? Right. Like a dog that going to his vomit. Your time. You spent your whole time. Yeah. That's how the Bible describes it. Second Peter two. But you get in the word of God, man. Humble yourself before God. Get alone with God and cry out to Him for mercy. Cry out to Him for help to forgive you and cleanse you. And that you want the power to overcome sin and then walk in holiness. What a bad that would be. You want to have a good testimony. That you lived your life for Jesus Christ and for no one else. That you burnt out for Him and only for Him. That's a good testimony. That you surrendered yourself to one true God and gave your life to Him. That's a good testimony. That's a good testimony. Not living your life in sin, not living your oh, life God. going through the oh, I, 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 night life, life. All over it's, not, it's not life at all. It's death. It's not a lifestyle, it's a death style. Because sin, the wages of sin is death. But God offers you life today, tonight. God offers you life. Will you accept the plea? Will you accept the plea and turn from your sin? I got to pass through school and all that stuff. Will you You're accept the plea to turn and do this right? Or okay. will you continue so, to go your own way? I grew up in a, or I was oh, you must like humble yourself. Okay. Like all my life, right? Okay. Be humble. So I was raised God resists the proud, like I go to but he gives mass, grace to the humble. The Bible says, do not be deceived. Do not be deceived. If you're truly humble, then you'll go home. Like you won't the Bible continue to come out here where it's, it's a bunch of sinners participating in sin. And if you are out here, you'll be called into repentance if you're truly humble. I would have like... Okay, so when it comes to obeying God, I don't see it as a burden. I don't see it as a hassle or restricting. No, I believe in God. Like I follow. I'm not saying you know. I'm just, I'm just telling you about my perspective on the Word of God and obeying it. I don't see it as a as a hindrance to my life or a, a removal of joy or fun. I don't see sin as fun. And as someone who's been changed by the power of God inside my life, I will never see sin as fun. I mean, you, you, I know you want to be a if I were to sin right now, I'd be miserable. I'd be miserable. 
It's not, there's no joy in it, there's no happiness in it for me. There's pleasure in it. And that pleasure is very fleeting, very passing. It lasts for a short period of time. Then I go back, I find more pleasure. Right? It's, just, it's a vicious cycle. I keep going back to sin, trying to find pleasure after pleasure after pleasure. But God wants what He wants. He wants to change you from the inside out. See, following Jesus Christ is not a matter of you know, tying up your bootstraps and trying with all your strength to do what is right. God wants to change you from the inside out. And then being holy comes natural. Now, before I became a Christian almost 26 years ago, I was 19 years old. And I love sin. I love fornication. I love drunken. I love look at porn, getting in fights, cussing. I loved all those things. I did it all the time. But then I surrendered my life to Jesus. He changed me in a moment in time. And the inside. And the Bible describes us as becoming born again. It's like being born all over again. They're both completely different. And the Bible says if anyone is in Christ, he's a new creature. All the old things have passed away. Behold, all has become new. And that's what happened to me. I didn't know that Bible verse at that time, but that's what happened to me. In June 1997, he changed me inside, and then it's like, I don't want to fornicate anymore. I don't want to get drunk. I don't want to cuss. I want to be holy. Because as you continue going, the way he did inside of me. So it's not a matter of you just trying as hard as you're going to be to obey God, because right now, if your heart isn't right with God, you have no really desire to be holy. You have a desire to only sin. That's the way I was. But God, if you surrender your life to Him, He will change you from the inside out. Yes, homosexuals. See, as much as I believe in God. I had a preacher come to our school once, and he, like, I asked him a question, you know, what's the overall, like, reason to life? He told me to create kids and to raise them to believe in God. Like, I thought the only point to life is just believing in God and then passing on to the next generation. Like, is there anything else to it? Well, I mean, God has purposes for your life. But you'll never know them until you surrender your life to him. I don't know why you hate the I word mean, of God because God is, what's your name? What? What's your name? Here. Jackson. Jackson. But as long as you can your, your name's God, not even in the Bible. God okay? You. God's not going to say, no, I want God. Jackson to do this, 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 you, and this so in the Bible. So, when so things angry? like that that are really specific to us, we have to seek so God and pray. And as a follow of Jesus Christ, he will speak to me. But if you're not willing to All surrender your life to him, he's not going to speak to you and reveal those things to you. You're truly wicked. You know, so if, if you won't you listen to him, no life. he's not going to listen to you. But Jesus Christ cannot that makes sense. Life. If you're not going to respect and honor God, keep his joy. commandments and, and surrender your life to him, why would he God listen to you in your prayers? You see, but he does, he does have a purpose for your because life. And it may include getting married. It may include having kids. But I'm sure there's more to it than that. When I became a Christian 26 years ago, I had no idea what God was going to do. I didn't know I was going to be doing this. Isn't that great? This wasn't even got thought on my mind live? to be a street preacher. You know, in our state of rebellion, I would have thought that. I have a wife and eight kids. Who has I would have thought that either. You, crush you, you know, I'm a graphic designer for a living. I would have thought that. I've traveled all over the world preaching the gospel. That's mercy. I wouldn't have thought of that. That's mercy. But this, when you, you when you follow Jesus mercy. Christ, there's no, the there's no telling what He'll do with your life. You need to humble yourself for the good. So if I might ask, what made you turn your life to Lord while He may be found? Preaching God. Right? Call upon him while he is near. Well, I mean, I, 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 I feel comfortable. Like no, no, it's fine. Yeah, no problem at all. So when I surrendered my life to Christ, yes, you need to I came from a wicked ways. background like I talked about a second ago. When he changed me, it was a such dramatic change. I mean, it was night and day. Everyone knew. All my friends my who I drank so with and did yeah, nasty things with, they all knew I was different. Like I was changed. As I continued and saw what some phase I was going through, they knew there was something different about me. So... God tells followers of Jesus Christ to go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. So it's like this, Jackson. If I have eternal life, and it's the best thing that's ever happened to me. I was going to say right here, I believe in Jesus, I believe in God. I believe he has a pure, like, step, step, step by life for us. Like, I believe he is leading us down the right path to his, to his, to his, to his, to his eternal kingdom. Like, well, he wants to, but you don't have to take that path. You, women you have free will. But what I was saying is that if I have eternal life, and it's the best thing that's ever happened to me, how can I not share it with others? If I love you, I have to say something. I can't let people go to hell. Causes you to and then without a warning, without an offer of eternal life, because so that's what compels me. God loved me first, I love him back, he tells me to preach, uh, I want to obey him, and I love people, I don't want them to go to hell. I want them to receive Jesus and get to eternal life. Your hands so those things are what provoke me to do what I do. 
For it's better but for definitely you a calling upon my life, too. With not one just, hand. Not everybody's going to do this. For you to have both your hands Even genuine Christians, not everybody can do exactly what I'm Jesus doing right here. They'll all be witnesses for Jesus. They'll all share the gospel. But not necessarily like this. Weeping. But this is definitely something God called me to, for sure. The fire is never quenched. The worm does not die. So like, It's an eternal punishment. Jesus explained yeah. just the severity was, of sin. Yeah. Yeah. If you understood so like, the severity of sin, you would run back, like you go for your to, life you go to confession, from you places like this, which God, encourage, you right? yeah, so encourage you to live in sin, which encourage you to come confess and, sin and repent of it. And live in rebellion. And you don't have to go to, to some God. man in a booth either. If you understood you to God through what Jesus. you're truly giving up for your sin, you doesn't have other questions to me or any other man. Because confess straight to God through Jesus Christ. It's leading you to repent of it. You're in your you that, will change it. with sinners and it's leading you to hell. Never, like, went the Bible life, says, uh, bad company corrupts good morals. Like, and blessed is the man who does not walk in the counsel of the ungodly, who does not sit in the seat of the ungodly. How could I? I had to deny everything I know. I mean, the experience I had with God in the way of sinners. So dramatically, I, I can't like unthink that. I can't undo that and think, well, that didn't really happen. I'd be delusional to even think about that. He, what he did was real. It was the realest thing I've ever happened. The realer than you and me talking right now. And I've never met God face to face like I'm talking to you, Jackson, but he's changed me in that way. My relationship with real. I talk to him. He speaks to me. He moves in my life. He uses me. He walks with me. He teaches me. He gives me wisdom. Leads me in my life. I mean, to come out I, I don't know how I, I don't know how I could possibly reverse God all that. For true life, you know, because you're not going to find it in here. You're not going to find it in here. You're just going to be like you denying the existence of your parents. Vanity. You're going to keep finding the lust of the flesh, the lust of you, the eyes. You wouldn't eyes, be here. Eyes, and the pride of life. didn't exist. Yes, these things. I wouldn't be here if God didn't exist. If God didn't do what they He did for me. Pleasurable for a season. There's the been difficulties in my life, of course. Every Christian has difficulties, you, trials, tribulations, good. hardships. Oh, it feels good to my body. It, it doesn't cause me to doubt no, God. It causes me to seek Him harder. In the last days, because no situation is the only one who can help me is God. Rather than love I need His help. That's the perfect so I seek him. To what I'm I don't seem to doubt him. I don't right think he doesn't today. love me or anything like that. I seek him harder because yeah, even in the Bible, you have people who have hardships. Job. Job. You ever heard of Job? Look at Job. He had all kinds of hardships because he was the most righteous man upon the earth. But you know, you won't God allowed him to go through that stuff. You won't have that sexual pleasure forever. You won't have that that weed pleasure forever. Of so, abusing drugs said, like, forever. You won't have that I went to a Catholic school. I went mass every Wednesday. Abuse, consumption, I mean, pleasure. Like, I've doubted God at points. Like, that pleasure will end one day. There have been times where I just like, question, like, if it was when real. You die, there, there have been times when where I'm like, turn away from it. When you understand that the judgment, it'll be gone. Like, like seeing like, a life-changing experience, so you like, go back to him, like, no, follow Jesus. Like, Jesus. You need to be born again. And pursue what he has like, for you. I know I'm going to face Rather than pursuing what you, you have again, for yourself. Like, but if I'm born again, like, what Jesus has will I just never so face those hardships again? Will I never, like, doubt him again? The life, the life, the okay, so life that Jesus has when you become so born better, again, it's not a guarantee of an easy life. Okay? Not a guarantee of smooth sailing. There's going to be difficulties, but the, the promise is that you'll have him with you. Right? You have him there helping you, walking with you, giving you strength, giving you guidance, giving you wisdom. But if you, if you continue down the path you're going on, you don't have him with you. You're doing it all on your own. And let's face it, Jackson, you and I, no matter how smart we get, sin. we're not as smart as God. Jesus Christ and, we, and we can't see the future. Yesterday, today, he knows the future. Forever. And he can help us in every situation. But if he knows the future, the then doesn't he doesn't know that we're going to go through stuff that will turn us away from him. Like, call upon he knows you'll go through stuff, he but he's not determining how you're going to respond to it. You have free will. Like, God sent me here tonight, right? Lord, you decided to come here. I don't know where you're from, Jackson. You decided to come to Panama City Beach this week, right? And here I am talking to you. I believe it's God's will for me to talk to you. But you still have a choice. No matter how good a preacher I am, no matter how, this, how much this conversation is ordained, you still have a choice to follow Jesus Christ, become born again or not. And he will not force you because he wants genuine love from you. And genuine love requires free choice. How can you escape? He wants me to follow him not because I'm forced to, because I'm willing to follow him at the end of my life. That's right. The rest of your days. Idly by, living their lives. Forgetting about God. So God is in none of their thoughts. God is in none of your daily thoughts. In the Bible, it talks about you've forgotten God. Against, you 
live your life how you want to live it. Whatever thoughts you may have of God is idolatry. Because if you're not following Jesus the truth, well, like, there's these people in here that believe that. Like, they just don't actually live their life without it and just doing you want to live it. Not how God is told you. Well, any, any sin life. leads to hell. Doesn't matter what it is. No matter what it is, like, it could be lying, stealing, lost. It's just simply lying to you, like, but saying, it's not a vibe, I haven't had a drink Therefore, he that's leading me to hell, unless I repent. It's free every sin must be repented of. You know, every sin. It doesn't matter what it is. And God's against every sin equally. And he calls all sinners to repentance. And every sinner has an option. No matter how bad their sin has been, no matter how much their sin has been, God has the ability to forgive them of all sin and to cleanse them and change them. But they got to come to him in humility and repentance and faith. We'll also say, if we say that we have fellowship with him, say some but murder. Walk like, in darkness. He just murdered eight kids. And we lie yeah. and do not practice. He goes to God and he confesses but his sins. But if we walk he's, in the light and he is the light, then we have fellowship with him. Is he going, the blood is he like going to hell or is he going to Oh, like I said, oh, so no matter what the sin the is, life, no matter how much the sin is, God is able to forgive Jesus someone of it. The grace of God through the cross of Jesus Christ, what he did on the cross, is sufficient to, him saying, to forgive everyone Lord. of every sin. But of if course, it must be genuine. I mean, you can't uh, just like, I'm going to go kill, and then I'll ask for forgiveness afterwards. You're, you're predetermining stuff like that. That's like abusing the grace of God. That's not real, genuine, sincere. That's like making up for your excuses. That's right. That's right. And I'm using God's grace as an, as an excuse to go sin, because you'll get forgiveness afterwards. So it's got to be genuine and sincere. It can't just be like flipping about it. How could that be? Well, I'll tell you how, because you're deceived. Well, thank you. Because you're not following Harrigan. God. Harrigan? Yeah. True. Nice to meet you. Because because you thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. God bless you. Been for so long, you've developed a, a, a second nature to sin. Because you've sinned for so long, you've chosen to willfully Man, tonight's been so much better, bro. So much better. I think the season don't want anything to do with it. Well, I had a conversation here with several of them. Yeah. And we haven't had problems since then, man. I think that even when we passed down there, I think they're followed up right there. That might be. I don't know. But he, the guy told me, the guy I was talking to for the longest here, he had like a cross point church shirt on or something like that. Like a green hoodie. I think he talked to me last night. He said, last night, their group, all they were hearing was, stop sinning, I'm not a sinner anymore. He said, we didn't have this conversation like I'm having with you right now. He said, I understand you better now. He said, I don't necessarily agree with you yet, but I'm going to read it myself, read about it myself. So, and I had contact with other guys too who weren't as humble as him. A guy before him was like, uh, he seemed like maybe Hispanic. Talked to him a little bit. He walked away kind of dumbfounded. Couldn't deal with the word of God. But he wasn't willing to be as humble as the other guy was. And then a girl earlier, I was rebuking her hard because she was coming at Sam and coming at Matthew like crazy. And she was really out of line. So I just started rebuking her. They pulled her away and, you know, coddled her and made sure she was okay in her feelings. <laughs> But it, it went, it got, it got good. Like she went away, and then the other guy, he was somewhat humble, went away. And then the guy, he was really humble, he stayed and got all of it. So since then, we have that problem. Yeah, I hope he does. Yeah. They go back to them and say, listen, those guys, we may not agree with they say, but they're doing good work. You know? There's been good conversations the whole night, man. A lifestyle of foolishness. I really hope we come back out here tomorrow night, man. We gotta pray yeah, God will fill up that weather, man. Turn from your ways of debauchery, of lawlessness, and turn to Jesus in truth. Yeah. You wanna preach, Sam? Okay. I'll probably be the last one to preach tonight. Okay. It's already 12 15. But with, but with every temptation, we give you a means. Actually, I don't, I don't need this one, bro. Okay. I got my own. Okay. I just fill up a spit. <laughs> test, test. The Bible says, God does not mock. Whatever a man sows, that he shall also reap. If he sowed to please the spirit, you'll reap everlasting life. Can I help you? No, I don't know who you are. I can't give you a pound. I don't want to. I don't want to agree with you in your sin. That, is, that wouldn't be righteous. Sorry, man. No, not gonna happen. 
because I can't I can't coddle you in your sin, I can't agree with you in your sin. What does that mean? I'm living God. No, no, you're not living for God if you're out here, man. Engaging in sin and debauchery. Yeah, you don't like Jesus even though you're a Catholic that goes to church all the time. Being a Catholic doesn't mean anything. Going to church doesn't mean anything. Oh, yeah. Shit my sack, bro. I go to church. Yeah, listen to your filthy mouth, man. I do. I go to church. It's not going to make you right with God. You go. Going to a building does not make you right with God. Yeah, I don't know what I'm talking about, so the potty mouth. Yeah, no, you don't. So says the potty mouth got here getting drunk and partying. Yeah. You know what you're talking about. I should listen to you about the Bible, right? Right, Bible scholars, listen to you. I'm not your dog. This is the Bible. I don't care what you think about me. I just—I was told to come talk to you. About what? I, he asked if I was born again. I said no. And he said have you okay. sinned? I said yes. That okay. was the whole conversation. So what is your religion, man? Catholic. Okay. You like serious about it? Devout about it? Or you just kind of? I gotta... go to church every week. Okay. That's the whole religion. Do you like raised and you're confirmed and all that kind of stuff? Yeah. Okay, like a Christian as a baby? There, yeah, I was baptized yeah. at like one. <laughs> so uh, so tell me tell me what you're doing out here. Not good things. Drunk okay. okay. Well I'm, I'm glad you're I'm glad you're I'm glad you're you're admitting that, but you understand that if you wanna follow Jesus you have to take it seriously. It's not about being a Catholic. It's about in fact Jesus said in John three you must be born again. Well, it's not about working on it. Surrender Jesus. Surrender all to Jesus Christ. Paul. Wait, what's your opinion on like Jesus walking the earth and talking to like all the sinners, the prostitutes, the people with leprosy? That's what I'm doing right now. I feel like you're condemning them though, instead of being understanding. Well, Jesus condemned people too. Wait, how do you surrender? How do you surrender? Well, if you're in the army and you have weapons and you're going to surrender, what do you do? Wait, so time out. You just said you were like. Lay down your weapons. You just said you were like God. Weapons of your warfare according to God are your sin. All right. Give up, give up your sin. Wait, what's my weapon? Your sin. Give up your sin. Oh, sin. Drunkenness, fornication, all that stuff. Give it up. It's going to cost you everything and send you to hell. It's going to cost you everything and send you to hell. I mean, it's, that should provoke you to give it up. Is your eternal soul worth your sin? That's tough. All right, I appreciate that. Okay, all right. Follow Jesus Christ. He is the King of Kings. He is the Lord of Lords. Jesus died for you on the cross. Died the just for the unjust to reconcile sinners back to God. If you're out here tonight and you're claiming to be a Christian doing ministry, and you think that me preaching the word of God is ruining things for your ministry, you don't have a ministry. It's that simple. If preaching the word of God is hateful to you, then you don't know God. If the word of God being preached is ruining your ministry, ruining the way you do ministry, you don't have a ministry. The Bible says, how can they believe on the one that I heard? How can they hear without a preacher? We're here to preach the word of God to you tonight, to call you to repentance. The Bible says, repent therefore and be converted that your sins might be blotted out. That times of refreshing, oh, such great times of refreshing may come upon you. I can still remember an event that happened 26 years ago, almost 26 years ago, the greatest thing that ever happened to me when I gave my life to Jesus Christ in my bedroom by my side. I still picture my bedroom, what it looked like, what I did, how I surrendered to him. I prayed to him and cried out to him and how much he changed me and delivered me and freed me from my sin. He gave me the victory. So it's a glorious, refreshing experience with God through the Holy Spirit. And that's what he offers you. I'm not talking about refreshing you get from the Bud Dumber and Miller Low Life. I'm not talking about the supposed refreshing you get from dirty dancing and getting drunk and having sex outside of marriage. I'm talking about the refreshment that comes from above. A refreshment to your soul. Not, uh, not just refreshment to your taste buds on your tongue. Refreshment to your pleasure, the pleasure part of your brain, a refreshment to your belly. I'm talking about true soul deep refreshment that comes from Jesus Christ, the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. You know, Jesus Christ loved you so much that he endured beatings and bruisings and whippings for you. 
The Bible says that he was, that Jesus Christ was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement for our peace was upon him and by his stripes we can be healed. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way and the Lord has laid upon him the iniquity of us all. You see, Jesus Christ went through an awful lot for you. All the beatings, the whippings, the crown of thorns put upon his head, the mocking, the punching. Jesus Christ went through all that for you. Do I want a shot? If you bring it out to me, I'll, I'll take it in my hand and pour it out on the ground. Thank you. I'll pour it out on the ground, young man. Alcohol is filthy to me. I want nothing to do with it ever again. I had my fill of my drunkenness back when I was a sinner. I gave it up and have no plans to ever go back to it. Christ has set me free. If you got set free from jail, would you go back to it? Yep, the same Jesus who drank wine will condemn you for your drunkenness. The same Jesus Christ who drank wine will condemn you for your drunkenness. But let's face it, you're not really drinking wine anyway. Don't deceive yourself. You're not really drinking wine. The Bible says drunkards will not inherit God's kingdom. You know you're destroying your brain cells, you'll never get them back. Destroying your liver, your kidney. People die from alcohol intoxication. I know back when I was a drunkard, I'd wake up places not knowing how I got there, next to someone who I didn't really know. It's a dangerous thing to be a drunkard. It could ruin your life to be a drunkard. And many of you are, tonight are planning to involve yourself in sexual immorality. There's lots of dangers to be sexually immoral. Lots of dangers. You can get STDs, sexually transmitted diseases, sexually transmitted infections. You can get pregnant out of wedlock. And then of course you might go get an abortion. But the worst thing that can happen to any fornicator is they wake up in hell. When it comes to drunkenness, you can have a DUI or DWI. Besides killing your brain cells and liver and kidney, the worst thing that can happen to any drunkard is stumble right into hell. Don't let that happen to you. Don't exalt your drunkenness and the pleasure, the buzz you get from it. Don't exalt your sexual immorality and the orgasm you receive from it. Don't exalt those things above Almighty God. Only God deserves your worship. Only God deserves such attention such time, such affection, such energy and investment of time. Only God deserves, not your, not your sin. Your sin deserves nothing from you. And your sin does you no good. But Jesus Christ tonight is offering you his mercy. He's offering you his kindness. He's offering you eternal life. And he calls you to himself to follow him. If you really love Jesus, he says himself in John 14, 15, if you love me, you'll keep my commandments. Going to church on Sunday, going to mass does not make you right with God. Taking communion will not make you right with God. Getting baptized does not make you right with God. You understand? These things don't make you right with God. Getting confirmed, being baptized as a baby does not make you right with God. Only Jesus can make you right with God through his sacrifice on the cross. And only by responding to the gospel message with childlike humble faith and repentance will God respond with giving you his grace and his mercy and his forgiveness. Those are the only options you have. There's no purgatory after the grave. There's no second chances after the grave. Don't put your hope in such false things. The only hope a sinner has is right now. That's precisely why the Bible says today is a day of salvation. If you hear his voice, do not harden your hearts. 
The Bible says, whereas we do not know what will happen tomorrow. For what is your life? It's even a vapor that appears for a little time and then vanishes away. You know, many of you, you like to vape. And vaping is a good illustration for what your life is like. You breathe that vape out of your mouth after sucking it into your lungs, and it disappears in a moment of time. And that's what your life is like according to the Bible. Whereas you do not know what will happen tomorrow. You can't tell the future. You don't know if you're going to live past tonight. You don't know if you're even going to make it to tomorrow. Whereas you do not know what will happen tomorrow. For what is your life? That's a good question. What is your life? What is your life consistent? What, what, what's the focus of your life? The purpose of your life? I had a young man ask that a little bit ago. What's the purpose of my life? What am I here for? Don't you want to know what the answer to that question is? And simply just to bask in as much play as you can, make as much money as you can, and then die? Is that what your life is like? Is that what your life is worth? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Jesus, I love Jesus, abortion. Jesus, I love abortion. You love killing babies? Oh, Shame yeah. on you. I love abortion. What a coward. But what is your life consistent? What is your life worth? What is the purpose of your life? What is the passion of your life? My life is for sinning. Well, sinning leads to hell. Sinning leads to hell. Don't keep sinning. Don't up in hell. Rather repent of your sin. Forsake your sin. What, what kind of like denomination are you? No denomination, young man. Just no. followers of Jesus Christ. Followers? Yeah, we actually obey him. Well, I'm Catholic. You're not following him. Why do you think I'm not following him? Well, Catholic? you're here. Well, if I'm here, then I can repent. Oh, well, you might be able to repent. You might not make it to that point. What do you mean? But you might die. In the midst of your sin, then you go to hell. What about purgatory? No such thing. There is such thing. No, no, the Bible doesn't teach that. In the Bible. No, where? Where? I don't know. Exactly. You're putting your hope in false things, young man. It's a very frail hope. It's sinking sand. I was taught in the Catholic Church. You're taught wrong. Well, how do you know? I was, I was raised in the Catholic Church, young man. It's you, false. So you, you were raised in the Catholic Church. Yeah, it's false. But now you consider yourself not denominational. Right? Well, I, I just consider myself a follower of Jesus. Follower of Jesus. Uh, born again. Bible-believing, Bible-obeying, follower of Jesus Christ. But God drank out, or Jesus drank out. So your problem is drunkenness. That's what you're telling me? No. In excess. Then why'd you bring it up? Well, I'm just saying, in excess. Because it's your problem, right? It's not a problem. Are you getting drunk? No. Did you get drunk yesterday? Hell yeah, I got drunk as fuck yesterday. I don't know if I believe you. Uh, Sorry. It's okay, I mean. No, it's not okay. It, Sin is never okay. I was saying it's not okay, but spreading the word's okay. And it is. Spreading kindness is okay. Well, I mean, what, it depends on what you mean by it. If you mean by kindness, niceness, no, not necessarily. Jesus wasn't nice to the Pharisees. He was nice to sinners who were, who were continuing in sin after they preached the word of God to them. He turned the cheek. Um, he commands to turn the cheek if someone's violent towards us. That's correct. But we're not talking about when God is judging people. The only violent thing he did well, was he flip did. over the tables at the temple, man. He That's did. pretty violent. He did yeah, forgive the him. But I'll tell you, when he comes he back, he's pretty violent then. He did forgive him. The, the Bible people. says in Isaiah that the blood of his enemies' garments will be all over. The blood of his enemies will be all over his garments. That's crazy. But, but the Bible is up for interpretation. Is that what you're going to rest your hope in? No, I mean. I just gave you a I just gave you some scripture talking about what Jesus can do when he returns, and you're saying, well, the Bible is up for interpretation. But that doesn't dismiss what I just said, young man. I didn't tell you to trust me. Open the Bible for yourself and read it. I have. I do read it. But you're not obeying it. The Bible has so what good has it done for you? Are you? I sure am. The Are you Bible perfect? has In Christ, yes. You're not. You're I am. No The Bible has Well, see, then why would you ask me that question if you don't believe anyone's perfect? Because you're not. Say one Only accept Jesus. Who, where does the Bible say that? It doesn't. Bible where does the Bible say no, that no one else is perfect? It's known. It's known by who? God. Everyone. No, no, God does not know perfect. that. You know you're not perfect. You sin no, every act day. Actually, I don't sin any even close to every day. Oh, my. That has to be a lie. You well, see, sins every day. What's, what's happening here, young man, is you're projecting your life upon me. You're assuming that my life is just like yours, but it's not. It's well, just what's happening here is you're It's just known what? What's known? You don't know me. You don't know who I am. You don't know what my it life is like. It doesn't matter. It's impossible to sin well, you, every day. Well, you say that, but you don't know that. Jesus and the Bible doesn't teach that. The only way you can know that everyone sins every day is if God revealed it to you. 
Because you're not God yourself, right? No, I'm not. And you don't know everybody in the world, right? Are you God? So only way you can know is God revealed. So where has God revealed to you that everybody sins every day? Are you God? Okay, so then you don't know that. Are you God? But with the Bible, no, I do know that. Because the Bible says that God commands all men everywhere to repent. Are you God? Right? The Bible says in Matthew 5, 48, be perfect as your heavenly Father is perfect. The Bible calls Noah perfect, he calls Job perfect, he calls David perfect, the, the, the parents of John the Baptist were perfect. That's what the Bible teaches. That's in the Old Testament. Are you God? Are you God? So the Old Testament is, is easier than the New Testament? Excuse me, I mean, are you God? The Old Testament people didn't have the Holy Spirit living inside of them. They did this before Christ died on the cross. I'm talking to him, stop being rude, stop being rude, I'm talking to him. Stop being rude, I'm talking to him. So the, before the, the cross, it was harder. Not easier. You didn't have the Holy Spirit living inside of you. I do. Yeah, so yes, you can be holy. And the only reason you're not holy is because you don't want to be holy. No, I do want to be holy. No, you don't. If you wanted to be holy, you'd be holy. Really? I mean, really, yes. But it's hard. Well, I didn't say it was easy. But I'm saying if you wanted to be holy, you'd be holy. The issue, young man, is not... Be, see, you're, you're trying in your own strength. If you're trying at all. I'm, I'm assuming you're trying to some degree. You're, you're, you're trying in your own strength. That's a problem. Because you'll, you'll just keep failing. Okay? But if you surrender your life to Jesus, truly surrender everything to him, he will change you from the inside out. He'll take out of you your hard heart and give you a soft heart. See, the only thing that, that makes me not want to believe you is the fact that you say that you are perfect without sin every day. Well, I didn't, I didn't say every day. That's your that's your words. You did. But I'm talking about presently. No, I didn't say every day. The words never came out of my mouth. No, did. You said that you don't sin every day. I don't sin every day. That, that's hard to believe. Okay, well, why is it hard to believe? This, help me reason through this, young man. Why is it hard to believe that someone actually does what God says? I mean, it, does God want me to do that? Does God want me to be holy? You, you don't know if God wants me to be holy? Okay, so he does. He wants me to be holy. Yeah. So why is it so hard to believe that someone is actually doing that? Because you have your own, you have your desires. Desire, like wanting your neighbor's goods, right? That's one of I have no desire for my neighbor's goods. Any? None. See, this is what I was going through. You what? Something? This is what I was talking about. Sickness. See, the problem is you have a hard heart right now, a sinful heart. But God can give you a new heart. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not saying to put you down. I'm just telling you the facts, okay? People who are not born again don't have, don't have a heart to try with God. But God can give you a new heart. This is His promise in the New Testament. So you say, where I am now, I'll go to heaven. Yes, you will. That's not where I want you to go. That's not where I want you to go, too, but I mean... Well, I'm not going there. The fact that you're lying about you're not sitting every day, you'll be there. Now, now here you go making that false accusation again, but you, I've already proved to you you don't know that. I do know that. How do you know that? Everyone sins every day. Where does the Bible say that? You just gotta repent. Where does the Bible say everyone sins every day? It doesn't. It doesn't. It says the exact opposite, young man. I mean, how is it possible? So by the power of God. By the power of God. That's what I was telling you a second ago. You can't do it in your own strength. You're going to fail. But by the power of God, you can. Well, that's that's interesting. That's interesting. That's that's the that's the cop out. That's the drive by walk away. That's the cowardly walk away. You're a cult. Hey, yeah, young man, don't be a coward. Don't be a coward, man. You are a coward. You're walking away, calling me a cult because you can't deal with the Bible. You're under conviction and you don't want to deal with it. You don't want to deal with it properly, so you're walking away like a coward. That's what you're doing. It's the truth. Jesus died for you. Won't you live for Jesus? Stop living for yourself. Stop living for your sin. Live for Jesus Christ. In fact, the Bible says he died for all. And those who live should live no longer for themselves. But that doesn't make you right with God, though. Bitch, I went to pri Listen to your filthy mouth. Wow. I went to How are you going to show me a cross on your bracelet and, and, and call me that word? Because you're doing that shit. Shame on you, man. Shame on you. A real Christian would be like... God's going to send you to hell. No offense, but I'm not taking advice to you what a real Christian is. I know. Okay, so stop giving me advice. I know. I'm for Jesus. Why, wait a minute. If you won't listen to God, li li listen. If you won't listen to God, why should I listen to you? I'm listening to God. You're not listening to God. You're out here sinning. I, I don't want to get into an argument. I'm not giving you an argument. I'm just giving you a reason, young man. How do you know what God wants? Oh, oh, you, what you're doing? I'm a, I'm a Catholic. Okay, well, that's probably part of the problem, to be honest. Okay, I was raised a Catholic. I know what it's like. There's no life in it. There's no power in it. There's no power in it. Are you not no, I'm not going to talk to you. I'm going to say something. Don't let to push you away. Talk to me. 
You can't talk to me for yourself? You don't have free will? No, you don't. No, you don't. If you love Jesus, you obey Jesus. No, you don't. If you're sitting with her, you definitely don't love her. Don't deceive yourself. You lust her. You don't love her. I've been there. I've done that. You don't love her. You lust her. You know, back, back when I was a sinner, back when I was living in sin, right before I became a Christian, I was dating a girl who claimed to be a Christian, and she fornicated with me within two weeks of meeting her. Was she a Christian? Of course not. I definitely wasn't a Christian. And when I came to repentance, one person who was really influential in my life and to get me to become a Christian told me I need to stop having sex with my girlfriend if I'm going to be a Christian. And you know what I said? I didn't argue with them. I didn't fight with them. I didn't try to justify. I said, okay, I'll stop. She didn't like it very much, but I didn't care. God calls you to stop your sinning, to give it all up, and to follow Jesus Christ. Maybe your sin is dressing immodestly. Maybe your sin is getting drunk. Maybe your sin is patriotism. Maybe, maybe your sin is false doctrine, like Catholicism. Or believe that you can keep on sinning and be right with God. Whatever your sin is, give it up. Follow Jesus Christ. He loves you at the cross. How you doing, sir? He, he loves you at the cross. Love him back. He deserves your love. There's no one in the world who deserves your love like Jesus does. And there's no one in the world whose love you deserve less than Jesus' love. But Jesus gave his love for you. He proved his love for you at the cross. His love was not empty words. His love is reality. His love is sacrificial. His love is patient and kind. It's not rejoice in iniquity, but rejoices in the truth. Hopes all things, believes all things, endures all things. Love never fails. True love. True love does not say, I love you. Let me have sex with you and then forget about you. That's not love. That's fake love. And the Bible says, let love be without hypocrisy. Abhor what is evil. Cling to what is good. I want to take a picture because it's. I don't have my. Phone. I don't have a phone, but I can, I can read it. Is there some? Is there one of these that you find particularly meaningful to you? Oh, yeah. Just open up. Open up the word. I mean, you don't. You don't even have to have a phone. Just have a Bible. Someone push the button. I know they didn't. I know this one takes quite a lot. Yeah, I know. Is there a spot that you guys like to stand at that's like really good for talking to people? Yeah, we were just talking in front of um, long boards for the last two hours. Where are you guys headed now? We're headed home. Oh, okay. We'll be out. To, we'll be out tomorrow night. Maybe if it's not raining. Yeah. Do you? Are you here during the day too? Uh, are you visiting from out of town? I don't know what I'm doing. Are tomorrow. you visiting from out of town? I am. We're gonna be over by Path of Willies tomorrow. What what religious organization are you guys a part of? So you can go to maranathacry.org. Yeah. Maranathacry. Oh, the website I'm, in the back I'm, of that right I'm there. I'm assuming you guys are a Christian yeah. organization. Yeah. There's actually a website in the back of this. Yeah. Check it out for yourself right well, there. Well, what would you be able to tell me? I mean, I'm, you know, I, 
So I don't I don't know what you're trying to tell me. Why, why should I listen? Okay, so have you ever lied before? <laughs> Everybody has. I'm just asking about you, though. Yeah. Have you ever stolen before? If I ever was. Stolen before? No. You sure? You have an emo boy haircut? Not in the, not in the traditional sense. But even something small? Can we download the store? No. Download something you shouldn't download? Not that I can think of. Oh, uh, you have watched watch movie you shouldn't be watching? No. Do you know? No. Okay, all right, I'll believe it. Even though you told me you're a liar, I'll still believe it. I am a liar, but I haven't I, done that. I just messed with you. Um, have you ever looked upon a woman with lust in your heart before? No, no, we're not. So have... I'm not I asking have. about everybody else. I have, about, okay. but so have you. Well, so have you, so have you. We're not asking about us, we're asking about you. We're talking about you now, okay? You're asking me why you should listen. I'm trying to give you some reasons why. I'm not arguing with you. Okay, I'm just letting you know. Have you ever desired something that wasn't yours? I got it. I've done all, everything, every question you're about to ask me, the answer is yes. Okay, well you said no to the stealing, so that's why I'm asking these questions. So, according to you on a mission, what's your name? Nolan. Nolan, Kerrigan, Nolan, good to meet you. So, Nolan, according to you on a mission, you're at least a liar, a uh, covetous person, and you're also an adulterer at heart, according to Jesus, because you look what woman lust in your heart, okay? So, if you, you've broken those, God, well, those are God's laws, those are God's laws, you've broken those things. So according to God, you deserve to be punished for your sins, because God is good and just. Okay? So God, if, if God is judging according to this holy standard of his law, you're not going to be allowed into his kingdom. Heaven? Well, you can call it heaven. It's called the kingdom of heaven. It's not going to be up in the sky in the clouds. It's going to be on earth. Okay? So God, he wants you to be in his kingdom, but rise up right now because you've broken his laws, you deserve his justice. Okay? But he's done something for you so you don't have to receive his justice. You know what that is? Okay, so he sent his only begotten son, Jesus Christ, to die on the cross for you. And he rose from the grave on the third day. And because of what he did for you on the cross, and all the suffering he went through, the atonement he made for you, you can have eternal life if you'll forsake your sins and put your trust in him. What makes you guys different than Catholics, Protestants, Methodists, Baptists? Well, I was raised, I was raised Catholic. Okay. Catholicism has no power in it. The Bible says you, you need to become born again, change from the inside out. So if, if, if I was going to offer you a cereal bowl and I have you one that has dirty on the inside. Could you remind me your name, please? Kerrigan. Kerrigan. Yeah. So if I offered you a cereal bowl, one that was dirty on the inside, one that was dirty on the outside, which one would you pick? Clean one. No, dirty on the inside or dirty on the outside? Dirty on the outside. Okay, so God wants to clean up an inside, man. Okay. Just like that cereal bowl we just talked about. Okay. From the inside out. Kerrigan, I'm going to be, I'm going to be honest with you. I'm getting kind of bored. I'm going to need you to shorten your uh, pitch. Repent or perish. There you go. That's the pitch.